welcome to an AP Human Geography video on scale of analysis. So, scale of analysis, we're going to learn what this is. We know what scale is, it's just what we're looking at. So, we're looking at a world map, we're looking at a global scale. If we're looking at uh, Mexico, we're looking at a country or national scale. It's a very, very simple concept. I have a video on this, um, if you want to go check that out. It's a very, very cool. Look, there's a card above the video. So, scale of analysis um, is confused with scale a lot. It's a topic that's really easy. It's just a ton of people struggle with it, and I'm constantly explaining to different people uh, scale of analysis and examples of various scales of analysis. So hopefully this video will prevent you from turning into one of those people. If you ever need help, well, you can contact me. So what is scale of analysis? Scale of analysis is the data we are comparing and analyzing. So it's not temperature. It's not population. It's kind of like the country, what we're what analyzing. Uh, so country was, I guess, an example. So if we're comparing data per country, country scale of analysis. It's very simple. Here we go. Let's look at this map. It's a map of temperature around the world. Um, so uh, red's hot, pink's cold. It should make sense to you. So we see the country's borders. Does this mean we're looking at a country or national scale of analysis? No. The reason for this is if we're looking at a national scale of analysis, the countries would all be one color. Look at Canada. I see some green, some pink, some purple, some blue um, in Canada. Look at Australia. I see some blue, some green, some yellow, some red. So countries can vary in color here on this map. And the data is not really set to one specific area. Um, we can compare the data uh, from Africa to uh, Serbia, but it's not set. We could say, yes, Serbia is more cold than Africa, but we're not really saying how much. To be honest, and sometimes we can actually see this data as well, um, which is very, very cool. So there's no really set place for each temperature as well. We just kind of see a range of colors. Uh, so this means it's at a global scale of analysis. Even if this map was just on Australia, we would still be looking at a global scale of analysis. All right, here we go. So the countries are all one color we're comparing analyzing data per country same thing we're going to temperature uh in celsius 30 degrees being a fahrenheit that's below freezing that's pretty cold um so yeah this is going to be a national scale of analysis we're comparing data per country all the countries are one color uh they all have their set data so we can definitely say that serbia so let's just say russia russia has around negative 10 degrees while um, Chad is around 20 to 30 degrees uh, Celsius. We could also say that this is a country scale of analysis. Um, national is not the specific term for it. Um, if you want to say country, I guess that could be more specific. All right, here we go. So scale of analysis does not always have to be present on maps. It can also be present on graphs and charts and other forms that we express data. So what's the scale of analysis of this? Well, this is also going to be a country scale of analysis. We're comparing data per country. We don't see um, the continents. We don't see the whole world. So we don't see population change in the world. We see population change on a country by country basis. We can see China here has a lot of people. And it's predicted by 2100 that China will be third in population. Uh, and India will be first. And Nigeria will be in second. Very cool. Let's look more at China, though, with its cities. So, meet China's mega cities. That's the title name of this graph. Uh, so, what is the scale of analysis of this? So, each city has a different population, and we're comparing the population uh, between these cities. So, this is going to be a city scale of analysis because we're comparing data per city. And since the title says it's the mega cities, mega city scale of analysis. So, there's so many scales of analysis that we can be looking at, and so many scales as well. All right, let's look at another example, though. All right, here we go. So this is taken off an FRQ I found um, in the top map, and we have the bottom map. Uh, and it's checking out change in rice yield, which is just rice output, per acre from 1970 to 2015. So we can see the darker it is, the more change there is. Uh, the lighter it is, the less change there is. So this top map, I don't see these country borders. I see borders, but it's not for the country. Uh, I don't see Nepal's borders. I see um, borders near where Nepal is, but that's not Nepal's borders. Uh, so, very cool. I don't see the United States-Canada border, the 49th parallel. Uh, so, we're looking at a regional scale of analysis. We're comparing data per uh, region. So, we could say... Um, actually, I, I, I can't really think of some names here. Uh, okay, let's look at this. So, we have West Africa on the left, and we can say this is North Africa. 
uh, we can compare data per here. Oh, they have around the same change. Very, very cool. Now, what about this bottom map? We're looking at a regional scale. We're looking at Southeast Asia. Uh, so, very, very cool. I mean, it tells us in the title. But we're comparing data per country. This means that we're looking at a national scale of analysis. Now, look here. Southeast Asia on the world map is kind of gray, but we can see some countries here like Vietnam and Indonesia that are kind of black, very, very dark. And why is this? Why is there a different change at the different scales of analysis? Well, the reason for this is the world map does not show variation uh, between the data. And in this case, it's the crop yield or crop output, if you like to say that. Um, so yeah, it doesn't show the changes. It doesn't show variety. It takes and counts all the countries uh, inside that region. All right, I think this is going to be our last one. So. Uh, we're looking at census tracts um, as well. So as we can see here, we're not looking at counties or boroughs. This is actually New York. Um, if we're looking at data per uh, borough, oh my gosh, I can't talk. Uh, so we're looking at the Bronx, Manhattan, Queens, Staten Island, all of that stuff. Then we would see a little less color variation. <laughs> All right, so what's the scale of analysis? Well, the scale of analysis is census tract scale of analysis. You could also say tract if you uh, like. So we're looking at a large scale map. It's actually pretty large scale. Remember, a globe is going to be small scale um, because we could see probably less data. I mean, we're not going to see every census tract on a world map. I mean, we can. It's just be a little hard to see the data and a little hard to present the data. <laughs> and plus, um, the census isn't conducted in every single uh, country. Not all 198 sovereign states conduct the census, uh, which I think they should. Okay, uh, so yeah, we're looking at census tract scope analysis. Each census tract within, you know, Manhattan can be a different color. We see some white, I see some yellow, I see some red, I see some orange. I see kind of like a violet uh, in there as well. So we're comparing data per census tract. It's very, very easy. And I hope you've gotten the gist of it. Now, you want more practice with scale of analysis or other AP Hug concepts? Well, there's a link on the screen, bit.ly slash Hug. Uh, it is case sensitive. I have some free MCQs and FRQs and a way to contact me without doxing me. I have a remind and a discord that you can use. My DMs are always open. And that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, leave a like and subscribe. It really does help me out. Leave a comment with criticism. I love criticism. Go check out that practice stuff I just said. It's really helpful. Um, I have some other things on there for AP Human, not just scale of analysis, by the way. Uh, and yeah, um, I got more AP Human videos. Why don't you go check those out? Adios.